go to my website. So first of all, I'm going to start with somebody else's slides. So this was a concept that came about um, from the, da the government data science community, this idea of a tool shed. And we had a meeting together, which unfortunately wasn't recorded for public use, but this is my opportunity to get this bit out. But these slides are from Matt Dre, who is at UKHSA. And he did some amazing pictures here. One of them is a tool shed that is messy. And, and actually what I'm gonna talk about probably looks like this a bit more. But he also found the, the kind of neat tool shed look that we're looking for. So when we work with coding in data science and analytics, there's a lot of move from what we do in code, which is quite abstract, to this idea of real world things. And we're trying to make what we do in our communities into this idea of, well, we think it it's kind of akin to a tool shed. I, I'd really like a tool shed that looks like that because that is amazing. I wanted to introduce people, particularly through this session, and then get some feedback and questions and some input into the NHSR community tool shed as kind of referred to it as an idea from um, the government data science community. So who are NHSR community, first of all? Now, I, I kind of talk about them because I've known them from the very beginning, um, but you may not. It's always good to introduce yourself. And that's my prompt to remind me to tell me who I am, which I forgot. It's good, isn't it? Thank you, past me. I'm Zoe Turner. I'm a senior data scientist. I'm working for the strategy unit, which is part of NHS Midlands and Lancashire commissioning support unit. Often we bring these things down to acronyms and we refer to this as MLCSU. So the organisation works in a consultancy type of format so that we sell our services back to the NHS for things like um, analysis, research, evidence work that my colleagues do, and I particularly do training for data science and also support NHSR community because the strategy unit have been supporting it through um, its inception, I think, in 2018. And we've had various funding that's come in to support it, but it's mainly volunteer based. It started in, oh yeah, short version. We're not just, right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll finish off what NHSR community is, first of all. It started in 2018 trying to promote the use of R within NHS. The people who started it had seen the use of R in their own work and could see how it could benefit analysis in the NHS. They started with a few courses, which I did um, to introduce to R&R &R Studio, but you don't really learn on one course. And it was a long journey for me, but I've been following it along with NHSR community, going to some of the webinars and the workshops and the conference, which we've also got just starting at the moment for this year in 2023 ourselves. We have workshops, online talks, and we have in-person talks, which are recorded and available through YouTube. We have a huge resource of people offering their skills and their information that they've picked up and sharing their knowledge in our but we're not just our NHS and we're not just our. When we first started, it was very focused and it possibly was just NHS and just our. But as we've grown as individuals with it and the community has grown as well, we're kind of constrained by our name and it can feel like people are excluded. You know, which part of the NHS, which country is it called NHS in some countries? Um, and also it's not just our people come with skills with SQL, um, Python and just because we use R doesn't mean that we're not interested in those two. And when I say we, I mean us. Everybody is involved. It's a community that people can get involved with, whether they what time they have and what capacity they have. So it's not a centralised unit. We have no hierarchy. We have people who are very vocal in it, me particularly, and uh, Chris is also here too. But we're vocal because it's a community that we really love to be part of, learn from ourselves and share our knowledge. The longer version of what I've just said, though, can be found in our own tool shed, which is what I wanted to introduce, which is the GitHub website. And we've put loads of things in there. Lots of information is in there. Um, and I've tried to make it a bit more accessible, accessible, not accessible, um, with some badges, which all have links to the different things we have. So that we have a website, too, but this is really where the tool analogy kind of gets used. We've got tools like packages and things that we've produced from those tools like books. There's a whole host of things and it's open for people to come along. Oops, gone to the wrong link for people to come along and view. This is where you can see that I can't use computers. So what do we have? No GitHub would be complete, I think, 
maybe my certain GitHub doesn't, but an organizational one without a package or maybe two. And we've got several. We've got some really polished, finished ones like the NHSR Plot the Dots, which was inspired from the Making Data Count initiative that came from NHS England, originally NHS Improvement, before the mergers occurred, um, which is on CRAN. So it's like a, an absolutely polished, finished thing that is still being developed. And then there are packages that have just been started and could do with some more work. We've got books. I went a bit crazy with books. We had a few, um, predominantly using R, we used Bookdown and um, I think that was the one that we used before, but now I've got very into quarto books and there are several of them, including the NHSR way to try and document what we do in the community and the training materials. So as I mentioned before, my role is in a consultancy form that I sell training to organizations, NHS organizations, civil service, local authorities and charities. But the training materials are NHS are community provided from them. Everything goes there first. So everything's in the open and all that people really are in a sense are paying for when they do fund my training is me to deliver them. And we have a universe as well. Now I haven't really explored this, but I just wanted to highlight this for people who are in sort of available or you know are aware we have um we have so many things we were trying to bring them together in this concept of a universe which was set up from my colleague tom Jemmett. so we've added things like plot the dots we have other packages actually nhsr data sets is on cran as well and that's been added to more recently with some more data sets so actually they're all work in progress although i said some were finished and polished and on cran because that's the ultimate aim for a lot of people in r so cran is a repository area where things are checked in terms of these uh, packages that we use in r they're checked structurally to see that they would work on different people's machines have the right documentation the things that you'd expect from these things that we call packages a lot and i realize i've just said packages a few times and i'm referring to r but people may <laughs> never view them Oh, bless you, whoever's on, on mute. Um, I hope you're okay there. And uh, so that's it. So packages are the ultimate aim really in R. We use them for our work, we can create them ourselves. And sometimes they're finished in a kind of concept of going into R at CRAN, which is this resource area. But is it really ever finished? Things get sometimes paused and then picked up later and then developed further. So we have two packages on CRAN and they're still being worked on. Some of the things that may, people may have heard about, if you've ever encountered anything with R, um, the Tidyverse packages, dplyr, ggplot2, these are still work in progress. There's still improvements to be made. It's not really finished. And adding tools to the tool shed, there are various ways that we can do this. Our GitHub particularly includes projects that we've had from the very beginning. So if I go to one of those and see what I've got there, what's my link? NHSR plot the dots. So this particular package was created from a small team of analysts that are dotted around the country. They had never worked together as individuals. They were working using this plot the dots process of um, statistical process control charts, which are used to measure quality improvement initiatives and sometimes other things that we have within the NHS. It comes from industry and we're getting quite keen on using them in the NHS, using the Making Data Count initiative, which is another community actually that um, is really big and very keen to have other people uh, join it and share knowledge to see about so you can pinpoint any changes over time and to see if those things have meaningful changes. So we were using particular statistics. Everybody's statistics were almost the same, but we were doing these color coordinations according to the, um, the initiative. This group of people had been using it separately. We, had, we used a different package and we were applying the colors in the different formats in different ways, some for static reports, some for interactive dashboards. And they got together and said, well, should we just have a package that does everything that we're trying to do with these logos and these colors? And they did it. There was a project with no project plan, no funding, possibly a bit of time assigned by each organization, but not really a lot. I think some of this occurred in people's own time because they, they enjoyed what they were doing and they were learning. It was a lot of fun, but there was no real structure. And yet 
a great package came out of this from a group of people. I was involved with it, but only in terms of going to the meetings and being part of the team. I coded very little. I chipped in occasionally, but I still felt part of the group and I learned so much from the others. And it was a really kind of disruptive way that we worked. We just produced something that was amazing and is now used across the NHS, and probably further afield because people got together and worked on this. As I say, it's been worked on again. The, the first release is out, but it's still being uh, developed further with new bits. And we've had recently transferred projects. I've transferred my own as well. So um, there is a book that we have, which is called Open Analytics. It was a list of website addresses um, that were brought together by AFRA analysts. So the Association for Professional Healthcare Analysts in 2020. They had a Google document that they got pulled together. I didn't know about it at the time. I just stumbled across it and they had a lot of links in there related to COVID because it was right in the middle of the pandemic. A Google document is really good because it's open to the public, but it's not that great to contribute to because you can't do much other than say, I think that this needs to be updated. And there was a lot that needed updating. It was open under a license called Creative Commons, which meant I could bring that into my, I could copy it and create a book in my own GitHub using R, which was my favorite language. So I built a book, took those links over, discarded those that had run out. And then over time, added to it as well. I left it a bit. So this is a project that's gone through various iterations. And then I decided when I came into this role, actually, this is something that maybe the R community, the NHSR community specifically, could use, add to and do more. I needed a brain dump, really. I actually have a lot of tabs open on my browser and they're all really useful. And I wanted somewhere that I could just point to people and go, here's all the resources I've got for um, my book. So if I go to the GitHub website, we've got open analytics resources and that takes you to the book, which is a nice uh, quarto book. And there are things like um, training and development opportunities, which I've added in government, you can see data science campus and analysis function training courses. So I really wanted a place where I could put our course material, our links. There are free things, but I didn't think necessarily everybody had seen it. So I just added to it. And this is a work in progress. It needs more links. It needs updating. Things change. So I did pass some of my work over and there have been other packages that have been given to us as well. And mainly that was around the idea of it gets more traction because it's more centralized. Other people then maybe feel like they can come in and collaborate and it can just be passed over as well in a holding sense. So as people are moving around organizations and I know in the civil service, this can happen a lot where you might be in an organization, but it's used more broadly. But you move from that organization, you would lose access to it in your repository. So NHSR community can act as like a holding site for where these packages could be in the future or projects, I should say, more broadly. Some of them are passed over with no other input rather than being worked on. And so this one is a quarto NHS theme. So there's, I think this was somebody who'd moved as well from the NHS into a different organization altogether and wished to share the NHSR theme because it was no longer going to necessarily be maintained in that previous department. And so this could be opened up. Plus it's also NHS wide. So then it felt like NHSR could have that. And that's what we sort of hold. But it's now open for anybody to contribute. And I will say that repeatedly. Anybody can contribute. And one other from input from the creator. Let me see what I've got here on my link. NHSR episodes. So this was passed over to us and I was very grateful to it. And I had a, a bit of a discussion with um, Tim on this about different parts of the code and what we could improve on it and standardize it and work on it. It was it came from a question, I think, from our NHSR Slack group, which is quite an active group. It's a very supportive one. We, unlike the government data science Slack group, have an open community. I, so anybody can join that. Um, and we post questions in a friendly way often. And this was about hospital, hospital episodes specifically overlapping in the gaps. And Tim is, is really good at coding, I'll say that for the record. So he wrote the package and wrote the code behind it. And again, it could do with a little bit more involvement and contribution 
possibly these things always benefit from documentation. So we can practice at these things. Um, documentation actually is quite hard at times. Uh, and sometimes the best points come from those who are using the packages or quite new to coding to come in and say, how does this work? I tried this and it didn't work. And we need that information for documentation. So at any level of anybody's coding practice, we can we welcome that input. What I found amazing when I was working with the NHSR community in the GitHub is that I just had this penny drop just recently, and it is this recent, where it's it wasn't about version control anymore for me. A lot of GitHub comes from this idea of or Git and GitHub, this storing of your code and snapshots of things. I realized it wasn't that when I was working with the NHSR community. It was that I was working in a team. This is a facilitator for our team to talk to each other in a coding way. We talk to each other in other ways. We talk in Slack, we talk in email, but they're all textual. When we're following code, that's what GitHub is. So we can have conversations of various levels. We can have issues raised. And that means that you can contribute by saying there's a bug or there's an enhancement. I'm just trying to get, oh, I'm opening like a million slides here. You can raise issues. This is a conversation. And it can come from people who don't necessarily have any coding background. I've contributed, um, and it's a bit kind of nerve wracking to the bigger packages out there and the bigger books like R for Data Science by Hadley Wickham. And you might ask a question like, uh, this doesn't work for me or this does, is this right? You certainly can do that with NHSR community and we can pick up this. I created a book, for example, on the R for Data Science solutions as part of a book club that we do with um, NHSR community. And an issue came in saying one of the original authors is writing her own solutions book. How does this fit with it? I had no idea. And that issue is really important. Now that's made me stop and think, and I need to change my files about my document. I need to reference that in my book. And that was so useful. So just saying something sometimes, just so I think they must know this. This is so simple. Maybe we don't. Maybe somebody else will come along and read it and go, that was just the problem I had. And even though it may be something that is something that's known as local to your computer it's really helpful to know now this is kind of typical of all my slides and tabs i've kind of gone crazy with my tabs here now as people build up their level of confidence in code you may wish to do a pull request directly to the repository and a pull request on github is where you've taken some code you've done some changes and it may not be the code it could be the text part of it too for example with those uh, links, you may say, well, this link has changed. It's no longer here. It points to this one. And you're competent enough and feel confident enough to change the code. And then you can then put that to the original owner or the repository as we have in NHSR community and say, I'd like to update this code. And so these are the um, read me, these pull requests that we have. They're from various people to our demos and how to's repository, which is it's a bit like a dumping ground, to be fair. We, we need to tidy it up and put in some sort of structure to it to help people locate interesting bits of code. But the, this is a great way of getting involved, doing your first pull request. If you're up to that level and you're like, I really want to do this, I want to try it. And it is nerve wracking. And it it's less nerve wracking over time when you practice things. And that's what this is about, practicing. Got to find my tool sheds. And conversations. This was the bit that I found with GitHub particularly, where I realized this was so much more than code even. This was about people, actually. I know we see these things and we think that they are just, you have to be really good and you have to be basically like a computer. You don't. We are creative beings and we are creative when we talk and collaborate with each other. And this was actually my conversation with Tim Taylor. And we picked up loads of stuff. I would say, did you do this? Or had you thought about that? And could you explain that bit? Because I'm learning that. And then likewise with other people who are just, say, early entry coding, pointing them into some good practice because they may not have realized that these things existed because people come to coding with different backgrounds. Sometimes it's formal, you've attended courses, and sometimes it's you've, you've learned on the job and done it on your own and didn't know that these things existed. And quite frankly, I'm learning myself because I see things in even early code and think that's really useful. You found a gem there and I can learn from that. I'm 
on my journey. I'm nowhere near an expert, but I just find these things incredibly exciting to find. Everything needs documentation. I'm hoping a lot of people here work with analysis and data, are analysts, are data scientists, and they think about their documentation. And if you don't, please do. Documentation is just key to everything. Stuff is in our heads. How do we get it out? And when I came into my particular role, I realized there's a lot of information in my head about NHSR community. And there's a lot of information in my colleagues' heads about how to run it. There's a lot of stuff goes on. We have a lot of outputs and there's a lot of work that goes underneath those outputs. Which is why I, yeah, not everything is obvious. Even to somebody who's been in the community for a long time, it's there's so much information going on, it's easy to miss stuff. And what I found was I'd be telling people, you know, they say, don't repeat yourself in code, don't repeat yourself in any kind of form. If you're saying the same things over and over again, like that, do it once, um, put it out there, which is why we've got the books. So the NHSR way is the book, which is inspired from the Turing way about the community, our expectations, our code of conduct, how we do things in the background, what do we do with our videos, what do we do with our podcasts, how do we run them, how do we promote them, we try to detail, well, I, I've tried to brain dump everything down and there'll be bits that I've missed and there'll be bits that people say, oh, you do that. Why do you do that? Do it this way. This is much better. And that's where the people come into it. And the other thing I found that was nice was you can practice all of these things that are kind of more data science technical using R as one of them, maybe Python, maybe the other language you use, using Git and GitHub, contributing in a team. These are really, really interesting and useful skills as data scientists. I don't really feel like I could be a data scientist without a team around me. It's nice to use words sometimes rather than code because then you don't have to think about two things. I'm thinking about how to contribute to this project, but I understand the text. I've written a paragraph or I've changed a link to something. It takes away some of that cognitive load when you're learning. And there we go, Turing way. So this is much more uh, detailed than our own book. And I've used their work as inspiration for my own. So a lot of the things within the R community, which is why I love it, Python too, but R has really attracted me because it's all about sharing and building on knowledge. They've got this beautiful book. I wanted to do something similar. And that's where I came up with uh, losing track of where I am, the NHSR way, which I have shared early on in this talk for uh, things. Oh, they've got a little link. But this is my start. And I say it's a start because it's open for corrections, updates and contributions to try and detail our code of conduct, as I said, training and what we do in the community. So how we do our Slack, how we manage it, Twitter, Boston, well, Twitter's now X, so that's out of date. If anybody wishes to change that, that would be great. How we deal with our websites and what we do with any mailing list that we have. It's a living document. It needs updating as our community changes and learns things along the way. We also, I found when I was writing my own, the GDS way. And I think some of this is like a, I find with the training that I do, I have some knowledge I go away and go oh can I do that what, what's this about how does this actually work and this is how I found the GDS way and it's a great book so there are three great books out there detailing what the practice is what's expected for people and again always open for contribution and building upon so just a final reminder before I change the, the tone of what we're going to do in this, so it's less me speaking, I think, is that we are called NHSR, but we're not just NHS. Really, there is no restriction to who can contribute, who comes in, who does webinar, webinars for us, who volunteers, who gives suggestions. And we're not just R, we are branching out. And I say a lot about R myself because that's the language I use. So that's the thing that I'm most familiar with. But we do. People do use Python. There is a, an NHS PyCon community as well. So when I share the Slack links in a second in the chat, I will also include NHS PyCon. They will be at our conference too. People will, we hope this year to have, a, well, we do have a mixture of Python and R talks. So I'm hoping I'm going to be one of those people who won't see the language. I'll just see how exciting both languages are. I don't get to choose which one to go to. Um, we just mix it all together. 
Crucially, we just value the participation of every member of the community and whatever level people are at at the moment. I've grown with this community hugely and I've always said I've grown in my confidence and in my technical ability because of the community and I give it back. And that is what I would like to open up to anybody for any questions here or suggestions. And I'll stop sharing my screen to give it a bit more space. I have to share a load of links as well while we're doing this. So I'm going to share the direct links to the NHSR Slack and the NHS PyCom Slack. Again, NHS PyCom is called NHS, but there's a lot of people from other areas around who join in into that Slack group and also contribute to their, um, they have a GitHub repository as well. So one of the people who has been involved in the R community, for example, is recoding the NHSR plot the dots, but using Python. So it's a nice recode so that we would be able to use it in either language. That could benefit from input. That would be wonderful if people could get involved if you would like to, if that's your language. If anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand or put them in the chat. And I'll also put into the comments as well. Oh, it didn't actually find the first one, but there are two email links to to contact us. So the NHSR community is a jointly held um, email box. So it's like our central in inbox, which is managed by our administrator and my own address. And Matt's here and I used to, I hope you were here when you saw your slides, <laughs> which are great. Is it too late to change the name from NHSR? Is the sunk cost too high? That's a great question. It leads me to also remind people that we have the conference this year which is started virtually at the moment. I'll share the links for the online tickets. Tickets are going quite fast now. We're getting quite close to the in-person events um, on the 17th and 18th of October. And over those two days, we're going to also have like side rooms, I think, where we're going to try out because this is the, the ethos of the community, unconferencing where people can suggest topics. And one of the topics I think is rebranding because we want to seem inclusive but we're also we've got a brand which is recognized and trusted but we I feel like we need to get different views on it I'm not sure I can see the value to both I really want this to be an inclusive and open in terms of can I join but I'm not NHS type of inclusivity as well as the wider accessibility for people um generally but are we going to find it a bit difficult if we come up with a new name and then have to build that rapport with everybody again that they know who we are? There is also NHSR resolution, which is confusing. Now, that is a very good point. We have had an email by accident because somebody's typed into NHS.net, NHSR, and got the wrong organisation. They meant to get it to resolution. I don't know whether NHS resolution have received our emails. They probably just ignored them. But it's more worrisome when it's the other way around because NHS resolution is about uh, they handle the compensation claims for the NHS. And we've also had a point at Opal Fruits to Starburst, Marathon to Snickers that we could rebrand. Does the community also work with non-coding tools like Power BI and Tallow? Yes, we do. As in, we don't have those things on our GitHub but it's a community and the community works in organizations that use dashboard tools like Tableau, Clicks, Power BI. And so there's a lot of interest to get R and say NHSR plot the dots, for example, into Power BI. And that knowledge is dispersed. What we're bringing together is like an internet system, isn't it? We're accessing lots of people's information. The community itself doesn't do training for these proprietary products because we're about open source but open source works with proprietary so there'll be somebody there and i will say yes absolutely because it's a community you, you, you'll find people who use both or use one and are interested in r for example oh somebody was enthusiastically looking through the events there's a lot of them online sessions will be posted on youtube yes so we have a youtube site um so our website generally if I just share that, should I share my website or just go to it? I'll just find the YouTube. 
the YouTube channel is really interesting. We have a lot of information on there and 2000 subscribers almost. Now, most YouTubers would uh, get very excited about that, I'm sure, but we've never promoted it really. We don't do things in a polished way. We're volunteers, we do the recordings, lots of people volunteer their time. This may be the first time that people have ever presented to a general audience. It feels like it's not that general, it's quite a niche technical audience, but presentation is quite tricky for people to get that experience. And I've got recordings on there that are from my early days of teaching and they were not great, let's say. I've left them there because it's a journey of learning and it's very popular. So people do catch up, I'm sure, or they find the NHSR community, but whatever it is that they do, they find those resources and it helps them in their work. And that is the purpose of NHSR community, as is. And I will also give another shout out to the government data science community. That's another great community that I work closely with because I really like being there. I feel um, very welcome. And it's breaking down those barriers between sometimes our teams, sometimes our organisations and certainly across government and public sector. Last time there was a Python stream at the NHS conference. Yes, there was. And they had a huge sense of missing out. So what we've done is we've mixed them together. I couldn't tell you, actually, because somebody did ask at one of the meetings I went to what day would be best because we're over two days. You know, which which sessions have Python because I'm interested in Python. And the only thing I could say was I know on this day, I think it's the second day, Splink will be there. The Ministry of Justice will be talking about their package. Splink, I know that's Python. It's a great package. If you need to choose a day, choose that one. Um, but otherwise, we're all working towards the same things. And sometimes it's a case of which language do you prefer? Which language does your team use? And which one may be the best for that job? Or it may be a combination of them. So we don't, this is one of the reasons why we're thinking about a rebrand. Is it something that we can do? Because we don't want to just say always, always this one language, because that is not. It's not our thing. We want. I'm. I really want to learn more about the other languages. Thank you, Mia, for sharing some links for the Government Data Science Campus and the communities, particularly, which is brilliant. And the program is online, as um, also shared for the conference. So this conference is a huge amount of work that's gone on, but I've been thinking a bit about it for the conference, which I'll be going to. And I've not really gone to many things. Um, what I want to say is that it's kind of like. It exists because of two things. One of them is the huge administrative work that goes on in the background. It's a ton of work, and I'm sure this is the same for Data Connect 23 that you're at today. It's the unseen work, a bit like our own work sometimes when we produce something and it looks great and people don't realise how much has gone on underneath. It could be like 10 years of learning the language or 2,000 lines of code. We just don't see that element of it. So there's a lot of work that's gone into it. And the other thing is people, it's the community again, the people who have offered their time to come and do these talks, we were inundated with abstracts. We had to really squeeze people in because there was so much good stuff and the people attending because you want to talk to people, you want to meet them. And we haven't done a great job, we felt, it was mentioned in our Slack group, of promoting this necessarily through the usual channels because we've just taken this on and this is not something that we knew. This is Chris and me, for example. But it just sort of worked its way round. People just tell each other or know about it and we do reach further than the NHS. We've had talks from Australia. Um, we had to organise that where they had to come in at the really early hours, so it was a bit late for them and a bit early for us. We've got talks from America. We've had them from other countries. We're really broadening out um, who we reach. So it's it's very big in that regard. It feels a lot bigger than some of my like history in the NHS. But this is why it's our community. It's our community for what we do in it, what we share with each other. Great questions. Are there any more? I can also pause recording um, to just open it up so that people can talk if they like. And I think it's enough of me talking on the internet, on the internet, on YouTube. I'm going to stop recording and just thank everybody for the recording. <laughs>